All right. All right, everybody, we're back. Um, we had already looked at Code Sandbox in the previous video, and now we're going to be jumping back into that. And uh, I think the next step that we haven't covered yet is uh, live coding with Code Sandbox. But uh, we are also just kind of just poking around to see what all we can do with this. So um, I'm gonna, here's what we'll do. Uh, let me, let me go ahead and share my screen and you can see where we're at. So if you've logged in and you've accessed and you've created, um, uh, you've created a, a code sandbox, then um, you can also share that with your friends. So uh, then if they want to create a pull request to commit to their GitHub, then they can do that. Uh, I was trying to make sure that I'm connected to GitHub. I don't see it over here though. Maybe I need to click here. That's just going to take me to GitHub. It looks like, yeah. Yeah, it's just taking me to there. This is the code sandbox GitHub. Um, Okay. Uh, I was trying to remember how we let me see. Okay. Maybe I, maybe I need to make some kind of change and then save it. Um, learn together. All right, so I'm going to save it. And let me see. Yeah, okay, so once you make a change and then you save it, then you can work within your GitHub uh, by clicking this little icon. And okay. So if I just say changed H2, then I commit that. Uh, so. Yeah. And if you go to GitHub. And then I need to move it up in my repos. All right, so this is the code React Code Sandbox 30 seconds ago. Yeah. <clears throat> and then we'll see that I changed H2. Yeah. All right, now let's try. Share us like uh, live coding if we. That uh, is, let's uh, try a pull request real quick. How about um, uh, a pull request? Is that if you are not the owner? Right? Yeah, no. That I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna send it to you, and then I'll let you share your screen of you trying to pull request my. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay, that's fine, Mesfin. All right, so that's mine. I'm gonna stop sharing. So if somebody who wants to jump on and share and access that.
Um, yeah, okay. So Mesfin, you need to you need to be done with the class today in the next hour. Yeah, after one hour, I think if we can finish, <clears throat> or like. Yeah, just shut it down in an hour. Yeah, that that'll be good for me too. So. Yeah. So this is the. Yeah. So make a change and then. Uh, yeah, but before that, I have to fork it. Yeah, fork it to yours and then. Create a change. Now it's uh, it's forked and then let's say that. So I go to GitHub and then I say <laughs> forked. And then I open a pull request. Can you see that there is no commit? Yeah, we there see. Is only a pull request. I'm... Yeah, since you're not the owner. Yes, that's what I was telling you that I'm not the owner. So I made a pull request and then. Uh -huh. Oh, it said request failed. Interesting. Mm, but. Are, can you see in your uh, GitHub, is there some pull request? Sometimes there is some network error or something. Can yeah, you check? It said, it said some kind of error. But uh, um, let me see. Let me check my GitHub if I'm receiving a pull request. Yeah. That, that. <sighs> okay. All right, let me see. I've gotten a pull request. <coughs> no, it's a zero thanks to the pull request tab. There is no. Uh, so it didn't go through. Okay. No. Yeah. I wonder if I need to send it to you differently. Uh, maybe can I get the whole URL from your GitHub so that I can import it from here? Uh, okay. Yeah, the that's address. probably that's probably the yeah. way that I have to do it. Yeah, the address then. Okay. Let me then, oh wait a minute. Uh bear with me a minute. Yeah, let's go to the I need to I need to probably close some stuff. I got like way too much stuff open. It's slowing my computer down. Okay, let me just get this link real quick and then. Yeah. I got too many processes going. Okay. So if we're in this, and then we come to the chat. Okay, so that's my okay. yeah. The whole okay, let's uh, uh, I go to my I go to my dashboard and then wait, I go to import from GitHub. So I'm gonna import this. Your it's loading. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, uh, so let's say that. And then it's forked. I would say that uh, forked. Okay, and now if I go to my GitHub, so 
so I okay so now I'm going to make a open APR let's see if it okay uh, it's also keep on failing here I'm trying also to make a few yeah um don't get the error uh yeah uh, let's let's maybe go to the help uh, yeah appear i uh, like like the code sandbox help yes no. so uh committing and opening your pr Um, yeah then the same thing we are doing i like is this is fork it i mean i don't know if it's fork it. Let, let's fork it i don't know maybe if that yeah maybe if that's the case i forked it now um let's make a pr Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it's failing again. Yeah, maybe there's something, but this is how it it should be. Yeah, I mean, there's no other way for you to make a pull request. So. Yeah, the only thing is that the pull request maybe. Go do the help. Help. Uh, you mean help in here? Okay. Yeah, it says help. Yeah. Um, help. Let's see. What the documentation? Go to search. Search, okay. And then PR. Or just say pull request. Mm -hmm. There's probably be lots of PR. Pull request. Okay. Okay, let's see this guy. Yeah, let's see what that is. But there is nothing. It's like it's their page. Yeah, it's just the page. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's just searching. Okay, go back to the help then. Go to yeah. documentation and um, explore sandbox probably. Yeah, go to documentation, see what that says. Yeah. And then PR. Yeah, search here, yeah. Well, yeah. here, like git committing and APR. Of course, Sandbox allows you to import, commit, and make a pull request to GitHub repository. Base concept. With Code with score Sandbox, you can import any public GitHub repository as a Sandbox. This concept is described in more detail. Okay. An imported sandbox will automatically stay in sync with GitHub repository. If you make a commit to a GitHub, it will reflect immediately in sandbox. For that reason, we have made GitHub sandbox immutable. <coughs> this means that you cannot make direct changes to the sandbox itself. However, you can still fork the sandbox. When you create a fork of a GitHub sandbox, we will still keep a reference to the original GitHub repository. This allows you to create commits and open pull requests from the forked sandbox. So, uh, committing and opening a PR. Yeah, it looks. I mean, it looks like we're following the right. Part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe there's some. Uh, scroll, scroll down. Is that all the page there is? Yes. That's, uh, there's nothing that's, more. No. Okay. Maybe they have then, some uh, go back to that help and submit some feedback for them because. Uh, you mean? Yeah. Go back to your um the app. App. Okay. Yeah, uh, and then go back to the help and submit some feedback saying that you're getting a. Uh, let's look and see what the number is for the error. Uh, 
Oh, like, do we have uh, try, to, try, to, try to do a pull request again to that one. Yeah. So, yeah, then, I have to open the full good one. Do you see? Yeah, come there. <coughs> and make a change, yeah, save it. Yeah, it's, I did the change. It's all like, okay, let's Okay, go. yeah. And then now <coughs> it, it detects the change is happening in here, if you see this. Mm -hmm. And then commit info. Uh, okay. Sign. And description, blah, blah. Okay. Then it says that open PR. Okay, so status code 409. Yeah. All right, yeah, maybe like swipe that, yeah. Okay, and then yeah. go to help. Help, and, yeah. And uh, um, it says open, uh, submit open feedback, issue. submit feedback. In here, like issue or I don't know if it is. No, no, go back to uh, submit feedback. Submit feedback. Yeah. yeah. And then just say, um, We are, uh, we are um, getting this error when we try to PR. Yeah. And, and then, the error is, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, submit uh, that. Yeah. Thank you. I think they will see. Or maybe there is a already a known request with the code sandbox. Can we take this thing as homework and if we do something for a few, we could come today? Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Cause we, we'll got come like, back tomorrow. we got like 40 minutes. So. Like in the night, we can do it like offline. So yeah. what do you think? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we'll see what feedback we get on that. Yeah, I, it's only only the PR, but the committee. Yeah, is. I would like also. I would like also to know about the the branch because in the normal circumstance we need to create a branch when we are making this PR. But yeah. in case I don't see that branch thing. You may have to set up your own branch. Yeah. So uh, let's ah. get out that one and why it keep on failing here. Then maybe uh, tomorrow we can come up with some kind of solution. You yeah. mean that you want to create a new branch oh. here? Yeah, or you may, have to, you may have to set up the branch already and then... For example... Yeah, because otherwise it's, it's, you are updating the master and I don't know, it could be that that, that could be the reason <clears throat> as no. well. You cannot... Let, let's say that what I was trying to tell you that let's say that in here there is another... <laughs> was it? There was a... W3 dev was it uh, the repository that I forked? Uh, JavaScript. Um, you can search it there. Right there. Yeah. J, J, JS, I think. <clears throat> JS study. This one. For example, in here, uh, it, can you see that here, like in the address bar, this is the master. Okay. And if I change it to Jamal edit, for example, this will be changed. So this is what you have to take as an input to code sandbox. That means yeah. you are working on the branch. Yeah, I think you have to have the branch from the But beginning. you have to have your own branch. It's not like on somebody's branch. So you have to create the branch yourself and your local. Yeah, you probably can't create it in uh, Code Sandbox. In code Sandbox, I don't see. In the Sandbox, I haven't seen. Yeah, I don't see Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. You, you cannot create it. Yeah. So if you cannot create a branch and you make some change, then that means you are updating the, the, the master. No, they, will, so, they say that you cannot update the master. They say that it's immutable. So. <laughs> okay. So it is something yeah. un, like under, under the hood. Yeah, they create for you a branch. Okay. Yeah, try yeah. to try to um from here uh let's let's create a vanilla JavaScript and yeah. let's try to do some live coding for the for free code camp lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that.
So go ahead and do that and then see if yeah, we can yeah. do live coding with you. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. The vanilla is on. <clears throat> okay, so I fork this one and then. Yeah, just name it uh, uh, return, return of value because that's where we're starting today. Okay. Function. Function. Okay. Is it uh, like. Are you creating a new file for every task or? No, uh, just, we'll just do it. Just a name. Uh, so, whenever so, it gets inconvenient to continue yeah. using one, we can get a new one. So now I'm going to share you go live uh, and open. Uh, I can make it uh, open to anyone. Yeah, yeah just make it open. Uh, send us yeah. the link. I will share you. I think you click classroom, so. Make it open to everybody. Yeah. Okay. Nah. Make it open. Do to chat them. as well. Uh, stop. Huh? Sorry. Uh, enable click, chat. Click yeah. chat. Yeah. And yes. Then. And a notification is okay. But this is the the yeah. live. Send up. Yeah. Share that, and then I think we should be able to see that. Yeah. I like uh, this feature. Is quite nice. Yeah. Everybody. Try yeah. to <laughs> to change switch switch. This one is good. So now what I want to do is that this uh, go to the file and index console log. One sec, guys. So now, yeah. So uh. Now we can see the console here. Here the console. <coughs> oh, continue. Uh, the first console has a problem. Is it like console log? Yeah. This one, oh, one yeah. Oh, I should. Yeah, so you can see that hello and most when you see. Oh, yeah. Elliot, where are you? <laughs> I haven't seen. How are you over? Mm, well, I don't see the result, the output. It's in here. Can you see in here? This is. I cannot see. Here, in the right corner. Can you see my cursor? Okay. Yeah, I have to click that consulting. Yeah, nice. <clears throat> it's, it's telling me I'm getting an error. Uh, you you need, you're still updating it. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting an error. Yeah, because uh, you updated it and you didn't finish the update. Like let's say that. Now, can you see me? What I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. Now. Yeah, I can see what you're doing now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now it should. It looks really funny on my end. Uh, <laughs> like um, the code is not the same. I don't know. Oh, really? Yeah, now it is. Okay, now it's updating, I think. Now it's the same, right? Uh, let me see. Let me double check. It's not quite the same, but it's uh, updating, I guess. But it's, we have different network... Uh, uh, like the refresh, but no, yeah. I think you have you can see it. I guess. Let me let me refresh the page and see what it does. I'm rejoining. Okay, yeah, now now I can see what you're seeing. Okay, so now if I make this empty. Yeah, I'm with you now. Yeah, so now that the console is. Yeah, I think there's times <clears throat> where it might not. Kara, did you access this? Uh, 
or uh, IUL. I haven't seen. IUL has been pretty quiet, man. <laughs> yes. Were you able to access it? Uh, the line, the line it's the only two user. Were you I'm able? To... You will go to the chat room, and there's the last link. Okay. Click on that, and then you'll see the same window. Then you are able to edit. Yeah, this is a really cool functionality, though. Yeah. I mean, even if it's like a little buggy, it's still sandbox. pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we're in a code sandbox, and uh, when uh, when one of us makes a change, then it reflects. So, uh, should I bring the? Yeah, let's go ahead and get started with free code camp before we. Can you... uh... Yeah. Can you see the? We can. Uh, after the class, we can. Everybody, everybody, give a try at Code Sandbox on free time. But um, let's uh, okay. let's get a, a few lessons in for free Code Camp today. Yeah, can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah, I can see. Free Code Camp. Okay. Okay, so today we start from the return value from a function. We can pass value into a function with arguments. If you remember yesterday, we talked about arguments and parameters. Parameters are a placeholder, like a variable or a value. But arguments are the actual value that you pass when you call a function. So you can use a return keyword statement to send a value back out of a function, for example, a function plus three and then there is a num which is a parameter and then it returns num plus three so this plus three function is or it accepts a parameter and it adds three into it and then return whoever it's calling it so which, which is the argument now the argument is here, number five, the actual value. Um, yeah. well, argument means actual value. Parameter means it's a variable, placeholder. Parameter, yeah. num, which is a placeholder. So here we have a variable answer. It will hold the function call, which you pass argument five. And this will be called, and then five, will be put in place of num and then you add three to five and return it in this place you will have eight then you assign the value eight to the variable answer so <clears throat> plus three takes an argument for num and returns a value equal to num plus three so so our task now is that to create a function with the name is times five function times five then we takes a parameter num let's call it num and then it returns we return us multiplying the num by five which means num times five and then we call the function by passing some number okay let's call times five three then this will return us 15 i guess if i run the test yeah so Do you have any question regarding this task? No. Yeah, so we can continue. Elliot? Uh, no, I don't, I don't have any question. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it maybe later. Okay, so 
understanding undefined value returned from a function. By the way, uh, does anyone know the difference between undefined and null? Uh, null would be empty, but undefined means you haven't assigned something. Yeah, you create a variable. Let's say that you have var sum, and if you don't if you don't assign it, then the value will be undefined. Mm -hmm. And null is that you just uh, what that is null is just it doesn't have value, right? It doesn't have it, it's not created at all. Yeah. It'd be like yeah. zero or an empty string. Okay. Or okay. okay. What, what else so, would we consider? Uh, but zero is also a value. Zero is a number. Zero would be not be considered null. So, okay. Do you remember the falsy value? Okay. I will. I will show yeah, you. Yeah. Can you see the console? Yeah, this is a good this is a good thing to review though. Truthies and yeah. falsies. Yeah, truthy and falsy. Do you remember the falsy? For example, uh empty string is false, right? Yeah, I think the default value is false. <clears throat> Type of what it it's a string, but <clears throat> uh how do I know that uh, to make it to return false? This is equals to, for example, this will be return false. But if I say, uh, yeah, uh, and also null, null, null is a false, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, what were the other false numbers? I mean, false. Undefined is a falsy. Yeah, undefined. Zero. What, what about what about this is equals to undefined? What? No, no, this is string. Now yeah. undefined in quotation is string. Now. Yeah, this is a string, but this is a keyword undefined. Okay, and what about the one? Uh, this one is equals to. A one what the <laughs> it gives me two yeah because you use two you double. Use a comparison but if you use a strict uh, comparison with a uh, triple yeah it will be false yeah yeah um yeah i think is there something you remember this another weird? another falsy yeah uh not in a n not uh not a number not a number is do you know that it's not equal to itself <laughs> it's not equal to itself yeah it's crazy. <laughs> With, yeah um what else is a falsy um zero, minus one what minus is? one yeah an, an empty string yeah, empty string. False um, itself is a false thing. Undefined, uh, null. Uh, apart from that, everything is truthy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <clears throat> so understanding undefined value returned from a function. A function can include the return statement, but it doesn't have to. In the case that the function doesn't have a return statement, when you call it, the function processes the inner code, but the return value is undefined. Okay. For example, there is a variable sum, which is assigned to zero, and a function add sum, which accepts parameter num, and then adds num to sum. And return value is equal to function called to a sum, with an argument of three. So three plus zero will be three and then it will be assigned to return value. So in this case, this function doesn't return uh, this sum. So the value of return value will be undefined, right? Uh, 
add sum is a function without a return statement. The function will change the global sum variable, but the return value of the function is undefined. Okay, there is an example here. Var sum zero sum. Okay, so if we we okay we have we're going to create a function add five function add five num and it adds the same like this but it adds five to to the number but change it it's sum it says sum not num uh yeah uh sorry yeah um <clears throat> okay it's adding it's uh, num, num plus five. <clears throat> the parameter yeah there is no parameter actually it's just adding five to some yeah so now yeah. this is undefined the value of if we just uh console log uh return <clears throat> this will be <clears throat> why is it not it's not giving me you need to open print close print yeah 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 function, function call yeah yeah so and then it's and not you should give some number no you just just i think you should have some no, this is this is like this because this is just a variable. The, the variable itself wasn't defined within the function. Oh no, no, it was no. defined globally. Okay. Yeah, because the function yeah. return value is uh, the return. So it should say five. Should undefined. No, it should say undefined. Because because there's no function, it's not returning like. It's returning nothing, like it's returning undefined. But if I say that, if I say return sum, the the answer should be five. Can you see? Because I say return sum. If if we remove the return value, it should be undefined. This uh, is buggy. I mean, if we took, if we take this to, here, we'll see that uh, sum is not defined. Okay, yeah. So var sum is equals zero. Now look, it's undefined. So so it's undefined. This is what we're looking for. Anyway, yeah, uh, this is what they are looking for. Uh, a sum should be equal to eight. Uh, why is it eight? Five plus three. So three is constant then. Yeah, I don't know why it's not console logging now. That's interesting. Yeah, that, uh, it's not working. Uh, okay, uh, sum should equal to eight. Okay, when I console log something, it works, but yeah <clears throat> you know if you go back to the question yeah this function adds five to the sum variable mm -hmm. yeah that means this Not should it. be like this it adds five that should be yeah right yeah but so, should, I mean, <clears throat> yeah so because sum was now it should pass sum but in that case what they want is that we do we have to call add three function because if we call if we call add three, then the value of sum will be three. 
before. Yeah, it's weird actually. It shouldn't be like that. <laughs> Can you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a really cool. weird one. Cool. Um, but uh, why is not why is it undefined? Which one? Is it just because of that return? Yes, it's because of the return. Because return is it optional or is it mandatory? Do you need to have all the time when you have a function? No, no, no. A function can there's, return. There's the not a, it's not a parameter defined. A function right. can have can have a return or no return. It doesn't matter. It depends on the implementation you, you're looking for. But yeah, because if I don't have anything returned, it, then yeah, um, uh, I'm I'm not sure about about this question because I don't know why they didn't call function three because they are expecting a value to be eight. That means yeah, I don't know how sum equals eight if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but it allows you to pass. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. It's yeah. okay. It's not perfect. Should we pass it or should we? Yeah, pass. Yeah, we should pass because. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> I mean. Okay, assignment with a return value. Okay, that means a return. There's a return. If you, are, if you recall from our discussion of storing value with the assignment operator, everything to the right of the, the equal sign is resolved before the value is assigned. This means we can take the return value of a function and assign it to a variable. Assume we have a predefined a function sum which adds two numbers together. Then a set of fun some function which accepts two arguments and assigns the result whatever is returning from this function to our sum. We will call some function which returns a value of 70 and assign it to our sum variable. Call the process arg function with an argument seven and assign its return value to the variable process. Okay. We're going to call uh, with a value of seven. And then in here, it's obvious that seven will go here and then seven plus three will be 10, 10 divided by five, two. Then the return value will be two. Then this will be assigned to process it. The process will be equals to this. So I guess that's what they are looking for. Okay. <clears throat> um, any question regarding this? So it's just <clears throat> well, if you need the result, like then you can you can save it in in some kind of variable. Variable, yeah, and then you have to make a return keyword to a function so that it will return a value. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise it would be from the previous section that it doesn't yeah. have return value, so it doesn't give you yeah. yeah. Um okay. Um okay stand in line in computer science a queue is an abstract data structure where items are kept in order. New items can be added at the back of the queue. If you remember you know, from yesterday, we have four operations in an array. There are push, which adds item to the end of the array, and pop, which removes from the end of the array and shift which removes from the beginning and I shift which adds to the beginning. So 
the same thing will be we'll have those methods for the queuing write a function next line which takes an array and a number item as an argument add the number to the end of the array then remove the first element of the array okay i think this seems fun okay we have function next in line which accepts array and an item code here okay if we want to add we have to add push array dot push why is that like push item and then in then ah okay so it means that uh, we're going to uh, remove an item from the array so that means that item is equals to array dot pop I think this should I don't know. Did you get it? Uh, just can you go back again to the question? Yeah, the question is that you have a function next line which accepts an array and yeah. an item, just as an individual item. Yeah. And then, for example, you pass this, you pass next line, uh, it should return a number like. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Pop. Uh, if you want to remove, you have to use pop, number. right? Okay. What if I do uh, <coughs> it like this? Uh, array dot pop. If I do like this. Uh, okay. There are two array functions that you need to use here right one add to the end of the array the other one remove them from the first element of the array hmm? okay this one is yeah. add dot push yeah you are going to push item add the okay. number to the end which is you push and then you pop it it you return yeah. the popped one okay yeah Okay. okay, it passes okay. two, but <laughs> uh, should return two. Uh, what else is the question? Write a function that which takes an array and a number as argument. Add the number to the end of the array, then remove the first element of the array. Yeah. The function should then return the element that was removed. Ah, you have to return the removed one. So that means, yeah, pop. Pop is it return the, the removed one, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you apply pop at the end, then you should get. Maybe do you need to assign to a variable? This? No, it, it's redundant. Uh, no, I mean the R does the pop. Because yeah, it's re uh, redundant. I mean, like if you want. Uh, if you. Like, uh, uh, if you just say less item is equal to this and then you return an item yeah. it's like it's, the same thing. it's yeah uh, i don't know it's the same thing. yeah uh, and can you run again yeah i did uh, um, I the third the third one it should return two the, 
Okay, add the number to the end of the array. Means you have to push it, right? When you push, ah, remove remove the first element of the array. Ah, okay. Ah, so what about yeah, 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 removing yeah, from the it. first or from the last? No, 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 no. no. It should be like item uh, array dot uh, shift uh, shift uh, shift. Unshift, yeah, yeah. Unshift, unshift. Unshift. No, it's adding. Shift it adds. Ah, uh, shift, shift. Yes, you are right. Now this should work. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's go back again. The solution. So the question was: write a function, yeah, which takes an array and an item as an argument, add the number to the end of the array. So oh. you use push. Yeah to add an item to the end of the array, yes. Then remove the first element of the array. Yeah, you just call the shift function. Because it says remove the first element. Yes. But yes. if it was the last element, then you use pop. Okay. Pop, yeah, that was the... Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's right. Okay, we have only nine minutes left. So let's do maybe one more. Okay. Let me, um, I, I didn't get to do this one, so let me. Um, okay, we can go back again and let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm working with it freshly. Um, you mind if I share my screen? Yeah, yeah sure. As yeah. I work through this one? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Okay, so here. I need to change here. Okay, so then add the number to the end. Okay, so I want to push. Um, equals <clears throat> array push. Yeah. And then. And the second question is then remove the first element of the array removing we use uh, shift okay because we are removing the first element that's so, the difference yeah with pop do i create a new line or i can i can still do that within this uh no no you need another one Okay, and then, okay, so array return, um, or, okay, then I just do array Don't shift. Dot shift. And try this one, run it. The element, but I need to. I need to name this. Like, return removed. <clears throat> uh. I think you don't need to assign to a variable because it's already at array dot shift. Mm. Okay. Yeah, the uh, JSON down there is doing it. Yeah, it will do it. Yeah. Can you run? Let's see if. Elliot, what, Elliot, can I say something in that one? Uh, you have return item is equal to. You you mm -hmm. can't have that such a, like declaration. First, you have to push item to our, an array, not assign. Oh, okay. You have to put that item variable inside push. Or he just, okay, he can write only r dot push. Remove, no, remove I, I know what you're saying. There. I know. Yeah. Yes. Put yeah. that item inside. Yeah, I was actually thinking that. about that as I was doing it. Yeah. yeah. Remove that return and put it down, that return, because you are going to return 
the removed one. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> no, put it. Uh, yeah, put it uh, in front of the array dot shift the return, return one, return keyword. Return. Return. Oh, okay, okay. I understand yeah. why. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Remove the yeah. first return. Delete. The remove first the first return. Up. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. Function cannot have two return values. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Now it worked. Because. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Actually, okay. yeah. the question says we need to return the the one which is removed, not yes. the one which is added. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Number Ask one me. was removed. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I see. Okay. We can continue then. Yeah. Go. <laughs> we'll okay. Can go. Continue. I think we can do one more. No, no. All right, understanding Boolean values. Another data type is the Boolean. Booleans may only be one of two values, true or false. They are basically little on off switches where true is on and false is off. These two states are mutually ex exclusive. Note, Boolean values are never written with quotes. The strings true and false are not Boolean and have no special meaning in JavaScript. Modify the welcome to booleans function so that it returns true instead of false with the return button, when the return button is clicked. Okay. So, let me change code below this line. Okay, so modify the, oh, I may need to reset this. Let me reset it. Yeah, it was already true. Um, okay, so true. And now when we return this, it's gonna be true. So that yeah. one's pretty simple. I mean, yeah, that was pretty simple. I, I think we all have an understanding of true and yeah, false. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they're keywords in JavaScript that yeah. uh, the, the Boolean keyword. All right, so now we have time for this, Mesfin? Uh, I think we can stop here. It's okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, yeah, so tomorrow we'll start with if statements and conditional logic. So this is gonna be getting into the, the heart of what programming <laughs> is all about. Is, it's, uh, getting, it's getting more fun now. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be. Do you think that let's, uh, if we made the like uh, uh, timeline, uh, like to finish, if we go to the uh, curriculum, like, yeah, and see where in the if. Yeah, I like the, the if you've heard of the new uh, free code camp, they, um, they have a numbering system, so you can know um, how many you've completed within the section. Ah, okay, okay. So like, so <laughs> 20 of 32 or you know, oh. <laughs> something like that. Oh, what, what was it? Uh, is it like uh, beta? Yeah, beta? it's still in beta. If you go to, um, I'll actually show everybody. Yeah. And it may, I don't know, it may be helpful in next iterations of the class if we do. If you go to Free Code Camp Rocks. Okay. Um, yeah, free code camp rocks, and then you access your your free code camp there. It won't okay. be connected to this because this is not live. This is just a beta version. But uh, if you one sec, if you come here to the learn curriculum, it's the same curriculum, but you can see that it's told me that I've done zero of twenty seven. <laughs> That's good. You know, but at yeah. least you could say that, like, you know, you know, it's, it's they, they, they want you to say hello world, yeah, and then you run the test, and then if I come back here, then it's going to be checked and it'll say one of twenty-seven. Yeah, yeah, that's you awesome. <laughs> so that's helpful. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, we're in the basics. So there's a hundred and seven. <laughs> wow.
<laughs> okay, so we are like 30% or something? Right. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'd have to count it. But... <laughs> okay. But okay. ES6 is only 26 lessons, so that's at least helpful. The other sections are much shorter than... We're just in the, in the, the meat. The meaty section. Basically. Yeah, I think yeah. if we could finish this with them. Yeah, the yeah. remaining sections aren't as long. And then, of course, there's the projects. Yeah. The palindrome we, checker. We need to do these projects also because uh, the projects may take days, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And we may realize that we can already start on one of these projects, you know, at a certain point <clears throat> based on what they're asking us to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like we, we could probably do it. Even just with ES6 alone, we could probably do. Have you gone so far before? Like, how far did you go? Uh, I've just gone through the basic JavaScript. I only okay, but okay. I've, I've gone through ES6 in other places, so I have an uh, understanding okay. of what ES6 is and what it isn't. But uh, okay. I'm not like I wouldn't say I'm like well read and well versed on it, but I. I have, you know, I have worked with ES6 before, but just not through the free code camp content. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. But uh, yeah, let's uh, call it a day on the recording. And um, if you've gotten to this point and you're in the video and you're watching, put. Uh, <coughs> um, Let's say I was trying to come up with something witty, but I don't have anything off the top of my head. Just let me know that you're here. Uh, if you've come here and you've watched this far, just say something like W3 develops rocks. And that way I will know that you, you watched to this point, but, um, hopefully, um, if you've got questions, please reach out to us in the Discord channel. Uh, and you can always mention us using the role of um, the JS study group. And, um, or you can always reach out to the community managers. If you've ever got a problem and nobody's reaching out to you, just be sure to mention the community managers. And then one of us, uh, there's like a group of 10 of us or so. Um, one of us should be able to help you, um, you know, like there's, there's actually like some react developers in that community managers and like some other verified develop developers. So, um, those guys have been really helpful to me and John. So, um, definitely reach out to the community managers. If you're ever lost, somebody should be able to help you. If not me and John and some of the others like Pat and Tamari, um, we have some other people that are, actually working in development so um but anyhow uh i'm gonna stop with the recording and we will call it a day but um happy coding everybody <laughs>